It's rare I just hit the record button after getting a new product, but we're evaluating this Turk Fin 20 to add to our standard PLC trainer, and it was ridiculously intuitive. As in, I didn't open up a single manual and managed to get this thing working. Let me show you how I did it. First thing I was curious about was whether it worked with our SIM IPE. So I plugged into it, then went to Discover Device, saw that it was making a DHCP request, so I clicked OK. And I assigned it to 192.168.115. Executed replace. Then I opened up my web browser and entered 192.168.115, which is the IP address I just assigned. And it brought up this configuration screen, and you can do everything in it. So if I go to diagnostics, I can see what's going on with all four of the IO link channels. Now, channel zero notices fine. And for what we're planning with our trainer, channel zero will have an IO link photo eye. Now, channel one and channel two will actually be standard sensors. That way, we can talk about three different types of sensors, but also IO link compared to a standard sensor. That's why channels one, two, and three had explanation points. So then it went to the IODD configurator and it told me to log in. So I entered password. For the login and right now I'm not going to change it and with zero interaction for me it already knows it has a banner photo eye a Q4X on port zero so then I went back to the main and went to parameters and once logged in I could change these so right here I just want a regular digital input for channel one a regular digital input for channel two and a regular digital input for channel three. And I'm gonna write that. And notice that my triangles went away. Now the next thing that caught my attention was the documentation tab because I really have done nothing as far as opening a manual yet. And when I got here, I saw the ethernet IP memory map. And when I clicked it, my mind really was blown because here is your assembly instance and size for your input, your output, and here's the I.O. mapping. And so it's based on words, which be incident. So now let's go over to Studio 5000 and try to add it. So we're gonna right click Ethernet, new module, and I'm gonna make this a generic module. Now I believe they probably have an EDS file where we wouldn't have to do this, but right now I'm just showing you how ridiculously easy this was. And I'm gonna call this my I.O. link. And then for our communications format, and this trips me up often, you gotta get this one right the first time. It's the only thing in Studio 5000's generic module they won't let you change afterwards. Our data type is gonna be an int, mainly because all of this is based on words or 16-bit numbers. The IP address is gonna be 192.168.1.15. And then we're gonna plug in the data that we saw on the web page. So our input assembly is going to be 103 with a size of 103, and our output is going to be 104 with a size of 67. So 103, 103, 104, 67. And then our configuration is going to be a 1 with a 0 since they didn't specify anything. And I'll click OK to that, and then go Communications, Who Active and go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading your program or any of those basic steps, then we have lessons on all of that. And the main thing we're looking for when we add an ethernet device is this IO okay. And this almost never happens. And so the fact that it happened here was when I hit the record button. So let's go see what we can learn just off of what we have in our web browser of the Turk module. So if we look here, we have some diagnostic data in word offset zero, but then one looks like our actual data. So if we go over here and we got our controller tags, we have IO link colon I data. In word offset one, we should be able to see the basic inputs of our IO link. So IO link channel zero, it's gonna be bit offset zero. One is going to be bit offset one, two is two, and three is three. And that right there is just incredibly friendly. So if I put my hand over channel zero's IO link photo eye, I'm not going to get a change because it is configured for IO link instead of a regular digital input. If I put something over channel one, then we're going to get something in number one. If I put something over channel two, 
then we get something in two. I plan on leaving three available for you to add your own IO link device, so there's nothing plugged into it. But let's see what we can learn about this IO link sensor without ever opening a manual. Now, the IO link data for channel zero is going to be words two through 17. So if we look over here at two, then we can see it is showing something. And as I get closer to it, the number is going down. As I get further away, the number is going up. And we still have a whole lot of work to do because we do need to look at the IODD file. Uh, they probably do have an EDS file so that we can actually put a TURC module in. But I wanted to show how easy it was to get this thing going without looking at a single piece of paper. And this is the first time I have ever ran a module that was this intuitive to add to Studio 5000. Now, right now, this is a prototype, so I don't even have anywhere to point you to as far as the next lesson. So hit that subscribe button. And when the next lesson comes out, I'll put a playlist right here pointing to it.